So hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video I want to talk about ornamental style tattoos and it's kind of a large topic to cover so if it's something you're interested in then keep watching. I also want to apologize in advance. It's really really windy out today so there might be a little bit of white noise and I also have the heater going because it's super cold in here. Sorry in advance. So, ornamental style in terms of tattooing is a very broad term that covers quite a few different genres by itself. It's, in summary, a decorative piece of art on your body that doesn't or does have meaning. So it's a very, very vague, very generic term, and some of the categories that fall underneath this are, in my opinion, organic ornamental, folk art ornamental, geometric, blackouts, color outs, tribal, neo-tribal, and um, Americanized tribal, I guess cyber sigil as well. We're not going to talk about all of those today. <laughs> today we're only going to talk about ornamental, organic, folk art, and the different tribals. Let's start off with regular ornamental. And in my opinion, this is a type of tattoo that in incorporates a lot of lines and dots, very thick line work and no shading at all. It is only line work and it is in a decorative spot of the body that maybe flows with it in one color and it's usually very, very bold or um, it can be also very delicate. There are some artists that specialize in this. Uh, two that I can think of off the top of my head are Brown Peanut and Dental Damage. And these artists also travel, so if you really like their work, and maybe you can get some work done by them if they come to your country. So ornamental style tattoos I feel like have gotten very popular in the past five-ish years or so. Um, I've started to see quite a lot of leg sleeves, full back pieces, or, you know, entire body suits in this style. All I think that this style can be very feminine or very masculine, and I really love that the way that people are able to take these same sorts of patterns and incorporate it to fit themselves. I think it's a really cool style. I would not get this thick ornamental style personally, but I do appreciate it because it does take skill to do all of the symmetrical work, to do like the mandalas, and to do like these even nice circles. <laughs> um, so I appreciate it. I appreciate it definitely. A style that's branched off of this, and in my opinion has sort of became its own style, is what I like to call organic ornamental. And this, in my opinion, is a very interesting style. I really love some of, the, some of the incorporations of nature into this style, and I really love the way that some artists are you know, creating works of art on their clients. I think it's beautiful. So this style I would categorize, it's, I've sometimes seen it called contemporary or abstract, and I think that fits as well. It just depends on the type of artist that you're going to as well as the type of tattoo that you're asking for. And it's very, very natural, very flowy, um, not really obstructed by any outside force, which I think is really cool. There are some artists that are able to give you sort of like a, an erosion or a patina look um, to make it look as if you are part of the landscape. I think that's really cool. Or people will get you know, parts of them that have tree bark or rocks or moss looking things and I think that's really cool too. It's a very unique idea and I love that you're able to incorporate nature in a way that we hadn't really thought of before. I'm sure we've all seen this TikTok where the artist has an ink cap full of black ink and they just toss it at somebody's back and where the ink fell on their back, that's what they tattooed. And it looks very, very natural, very, very much like its own piece of artwork. 
even if it's not very detailed or like has a subject matter it still is in my opinion a very nice piece of art and some artists will do something similar to that where they will dip their dip a paintbrush into the stencil stuff or stencil paper and they will just paint abstract lines on their client in a very painterly abstract sort of way and I feel like that also fits in this category because the lines that they are doing feel very organic to me they feel very natural and so I would I would categorize that in this but it could also be considered abstract depending on what the artist specializes in and what you're asking for sorry about that <laughs> we got some some wind going on today So the next style that I want to talk about is folk art, and I really love this style. I have a piece of folk art ornamental myself. I designed it myself, and I really love it. Um, this is a style of tattooing that I, I have seen a lot of people get for their genealogy or ancestry, where they, um, especially here in the United States, they find out what countries their ancestors were from, and then they find folk patterns of those countries and put them together to create their own sort of piece of history. And I did the same sort of thing with my sternum piece. I have Germanic folk patterns on the top and then I have Native American folk patterns on the bottom. And a lot of people have been doing this as well and I really love seeing the way that you're able to dig up history and tattoo it. I've seen a lot of um, weaving patterns, beading patterns, People take old paintings or family crests and, you know, remix them a little bit and put them into a tattoo, and I think that's super cool. I've seen a lot of, um, like, Scandinavian, Ukrainian, uh, Germanic folk patterns. So, I really love all ornamental style tattoos. I think they're all really cool. Um, folk art especially, because that, in my... In my opinion, it's kind of uh, resurfacing history a little bit, and I love that you're able to find a connection to people in the past and carry it forward into the future. So we have to talk about tribal. In my opinion, there are four different categories of tribal tattoos. There is tribal folk art, there is Polynesian tribal, there is Americanized tribal, and then there is neo-tribal. Tribal folk art. Um, this is kind of branching off of what we just talked about where you're taking your weaving patterns, beading patterns, um, artwork, historical things like that and putting them on your skin. A lot of Native American or Indigenous or First Peoples in North America are reclaiming their roots in the form of tattooing, especially um, in Canada, which I think is really cool. They're able to take ownership back to a part of their culture that was suppressed. Taranga from Alien Weaponry. He has a weaving pattern on his neck and then he has his moko on his face. But we're going to talk about that in a second. <laughs> you know when people get tattoos of dream catchers or things like that or headdresses? Um, I would not consider those tribal tattoos because that is more subject matter it was it's more cultural appropriation i don't think that any actual indigenous person would be getting those tattoos because they know the true meaning of those things any indigenous motif tattoos are going to have a meaning especially when it comes to different tribes so be very careful <laughs> when you're researching the subject matter of some of your tattoos um, you might unintentionally be offending somebody and you know, you don't want to you don't want to inadvertently hurt anybody Especially when cultures like that have undergone such suppression and Have worked so hard to get back to where they are now So just just something to keep in mind 
So that, in my opinion, is tribal folk art tattoos. Now we can talk about what I consider American tribal. So tribal tattoos Americanized were, in my opinion, the tattoos that the that the bro dudes got back in like the early 90s and 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, whenever it was. It was a little bit before my time. I was a baby. People got this style of tattoo just to prove that they were tough and that they wanted a tattoo. It doesn't really have any significance to the holder or to the the people that it's based off of. This is a style of tattoo that really aged poorly. Early 2000s, it was already not popular. Very difficult to remove or cover up because they are so big and so black. So I think amputation is probably the only thing you can do. <laughs> and it's to this day considered like one of the worst mistakes that you could have made as a teenager or an early 20 year old in the 90s. You can still see some people walking around with these to this day, but it's very rare because the people that did get them either got them covered up by something cooler or um, had them removed. With that being said, let's talk about neo-tribal, which is the resurgence of tribal. A lot of the tattooers that were around in the 90s and early 2000s that saw so many tribal tattoos come and go are not happy about the resurgence of tribal as of late. I feel like the last couple years, especially with the age of the internet and the whole uh, Y2K fashion phenomena, tribal tattoos have sort of made a weird comeback. There are some artists that are using tribal as a way to kind of make fun of the way that tribal used to be, and then there are some tattoo artists that are taking tribal and making it their very own. I've seen a lot more tribal tramp stamps coming out in the past few years than I had my previous entire life. The whole Y2K fashion as an idea is very strange to me because all of the people that oppose it are people that saw their parents look like that. So all of us that did see our parents like that are now watching children running around dressed like our parents from when we were kids. So like in my opinion there's this sort of weird cognitive dissonance. You have memories of when you were a kid and the way that people dressed when, you, when they were grown-ups and now you're a grown-up and you're seeing kids dressed the way that grown-ups did when you were a kid. But maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm thinking about it way too hard. Um, I don't know. It's just strange to me. So the tattoo styles that were popular back then are, you know, becoming popular again because of the Y2K fashion trend. Now, on a more serious note, we're going to talk about Polynesian tribal tattoos. There are five main Polynesian style tattoos. They are Polynesian, Marquesan, Samoan, Tahitian, and Hawaiian. Some people carry these style of tattoos because they had a friend or they visited a Polynesian place and got the tattoo. Um, sometimes they have like a Polynesian friend that passed away and they wanted to remember them, something like that. It's never good to make assumptions about somebody's Polynesian tattoos, but as a tattoo artist, I strongly suggest turning these style of tattoos down. I know that in Hawaii, if you want to get a Hawaiian style tattoo, you have to do a screening process to, just like they have in the United States. If you want to join a reservation or prove that you belong with the reservation for any sort of tribe, you have to do what is called a blood quantum, which is tracing your ancestry and sometimes even doing a physical biological test to show how much percentage of indigenous you are. So in Hawaii, not only do you have to do that same sort of blood quantum test, but you also have to undergo like a, a lengthy interview process to be able to make sure that you are the right carrier for this cultural legacy. 
all Polynesian style tattoos that you see online are Polynesian style tattoos that were stolen from people that have those tattoos. The, the tattoo givers, the practitioners of this traditional style of tattooing, they do not put that information on the internet to research. This was all stuff that was taken primarily by Western culture and put online for their own profit or their own gain. All Polynesian tattoos have meaning to them, and usually the wearer of them doesn't even know the meaning. They are given that meaning in the ritualistic ceremony, usually surrounded by their family members and usually done in like the traditional sense. So if the wearer doesn't even know the meaning and the practitioners of it are not putting the meaning online, nobody else is going to know what they mean unless you ask them in person physically. Um, there are practitioners in the United States that know what these things mean and specialize in this. The only thing is you have to travel um, to go to them. I know there's somebody in San Diego and I know there's somebody also in Minnesota. This is a very um, specific sort of tattoo and I want to talk about why it is disrespectful to get this type of tattoo. New Zealand is the home to the Maori people, which are large practitioners of Polynesian style tattoos. They have what they call ta moko, and it's a very sacred sort of tattoo that you can get. Moko, or ta moko, it's something that has been going on that we have known about since around the 1300s. So long, long-standing tradition. We don't know for sure because nobody has documentation of these indigenous peoples, but we believe that the people that founded all of the Polynesian islands as well as Hawaii were all people that came from the same place. New Zealand didn't actually have any record of any European settlers living on it before the Maori people got there. European settlers came to New Zealand around like the late 1600s, early 1700s, and started colonizing and started changing things. And much like in the United States, when the, when the European settlers came, the indigenous people got either wiped out or horrendously sick by diseases. Their lands were taken from them, much like in the United States. Their lands were taken from them. They were suppressed. They were told that they had to assimilate into the European culture and things like that. In the 1896 census, New Zealand had a Maori population of 42,000, by which time Europeans numbered more than 700,000. So something that happened in 1907, which was the suppression of the Maori language. Anybody speaking the Maori language was forced with capital punishment including in schools. It was considered bad to have any sort of ties to being Maori and to not be assimilated. There were protests and there were riots in the 1960s and the 1970s. Maori language has been reinstated into New Zealand. You're allowed to speak Maori now and the New Zealand Council actually added two Maori television channels to the Maori broadcasting network. Now the New Zealand government is working with the Maori people to get them reparations and to get them culturally recognized and accepted. The people that have moko or practice Maori traditions are people that have earned it. And it's considered very disrespectful to try to get those tattoos or to try to copy somebody's tattoos when their culture has suffered so much because of them. Yeah, the Maori people their moko, it's all very sacred, and it has been around for, what is that, over a thousand years that we know of? Could have been around for even longer that we didn't know of. And it's the same for any Polynesian tattoo, it's the same for any indigenous tattoo. All indigenous people have suffered. It's all very sad, and that is why it is disrespectful to get a tribal tattoo if you are not of that tribe.
Thank you for watching. If you like this video, check out my other ones. And we'll see you next time. So, this is those, this is those, English good. Tattoos that were popularized. English real good, fuck. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs>